all right so today we are going to start our last chapter which is applied three so uh, we'll be covering some portions of this chapter so and we'll talk about the uh, trigonometric functions and then also how to use those functions to uh, solve some real life problems you'll see those again some basics from the last chapter remember we talked about the uh, area, perimeter, and volume in the last chapter. So we probably need some of those basics again. So again, this is a triangle, left side, and the right side you have a rectangle, also like a square, right? And then you can see that the triangle has three angle, you know, just like every triangle. And then all angles always add up to 180 degree, no matter how you add them, no matter what kind of triangle it is, you know, equilateral or uh, right angle, no matter what it is, it should be always 180 in total. And then also, in case of tri in case of rectangle, we can just draw a diagonal in the rectangle, and you can divide it into two triangles. So that's how uh, each triangle again makes 180 there. So two triangle makes 360. So pretty much like three angle, four angles make 360. Okay. So these are about the. Uh, Triangles classification by angles because um, you can always, I think, have an angle which has a specific property in the triangle. And then. So, triangle is always like what? The, it's a three side, you know, three edge, I'm saying three side, three angle. So that's why you can classify triangle by their angles, by their sides. So here we have the classification by the angles because, because you know, the last chapter we talked about the triangle classification by their sides. Okay. Now the right angle again, one angle will be 100. Uh, one angle will be 90 degree. Total will be 180. And oblique triangle are two types, like obtuse and acute. In the obtuse triangle, you have at least one. So for an example, these are all right angles because you see here all the each of these you have at least one angle, which is 90, right? Which is exactly 90. So here this is the 90 degree angle, right? Here this is the 90 degree angle. You see the other two angles will make 90 in total. But one angle would in itself is a 90 degree angle. That's how it is, right angle. These, these are oblique, oblique triangles. So you know, again, two kinds. One is obtuse triangle. In obtuse triangle, there will be one angle which will be always more than 90. For an example, here, if you look at this angle, it is more than 90, right? So that's, that's the uh, obtuse triangle. Here, this angle is more than 90, right? So here, this one is more than 90. You can see this. An acute triangle, none of the angle will be more than 90. But again, no matter how you draw it, you can, it's always 100, 180. Okay? So if you see all of these, none of the angles are 90. Okay? But in total, it's again 180. Okay, so these are acute triangles. So these are the classifications again by the uh, sides, just to one pressure. So equilateral triangle and isosceles triangle, scalene triangle. So let's see, uh, equilateral triangle, you have all sides equal, and again, all angles are equal as well. So pretty much all angles are 60 each because you have three angles and total is 180, so you divide it by three, 180. So divide by three, it will be 60 each. So isosceles triangle, two sides are equal, two angles are equal. Because you know, sometimes if, even when you, uh, even if you classify by their, a, by their side, you still you have some property which um, have something to do with the angle. So that's why we are talking about the angles here as well. Okay. Now here, no no sides and angles are equal. Okay. So it's current triangle. So pretty much a lot of triangles in the real life may be like this. It's nothing equal. So no sides are equal, no angles are equal as well. Okay. So but remember the triangles may have the same uh, may not have the same shapes, but they may have the same angles. Okay? Uh, I'm saying it's probably a lot of, you know, the big triangle, there is a small triangle, but remember, in total, no matter how you draw it, it's always 180. So it's possible that you have two different sides of triangle, but still both triangles have the same angles. Okay. okay, which one is the right triangle here? A, right, because here, this is the 90 degree angle. Again, which one is right angle? C. So there is a 90 degree angle here, okay, this one. By definition, a right angle, right triangle has what? 
of course 190 degree angle right in a right triangle if a is 60 what is b so for an example if you look at this triangle this is the triangle pretty much will be using a lot when we discuss about the, uh, the trigonometric functions pretty much in three we talked about this so if you notice this triangle something to notice here carefully so all the uppercase letters are basically the angles okay all the uppercase letters so this is a capital m i mean the uppercase a means it's an angle uppercase b again an angle uppercase c again an angle all the small ones meaning the lowercase ones those are the sides okay and if you look at more carefully we have done something like this this is the angle a and this is the opposite side of this angle this side okay so the opposite side will have the same title i'm saying if the angle is uppercase a opposite side will be the lowercase a okay for an example if you see this one this is the angle b and the opposite side is this one right which is small b so be careful i'm saying you know this triangle will be you know, extremely useful in triangle i'm saying all the tricks so here this is angle c which is again 90 degree so this is the side c so all the sides are opposite okay and the same side now here we know that this is a right triangle because the c is 90 degree but the question is if the a is 60 this angle is 60 how much would be b it will of course 30 right because in total you have to have 180 so you know two angles one one is 90 another one is 60 that makes 150 in total so you still have 30 degree left so the b must be 30 degree. how about this one angle a is 40 so b must be 50 right because you have to have at least 180 but one important part is uh you know that there is one angle which is 90 but if the total is 180 the other two will always make another 90 okay so that means what in case of this side you know this triangle if the capital c is nine since the capital c is 90 capital a and capital b meaning the a plus b angle a plus angle b will always make another 90 okay okay if a is 70 the b is 20 of course right because a plus b is always 90 so right answer is a is 45 B is 45 as well. The right answer is D. <coughs> A is 30, and B is 70. What is C? Now this is just a, let's say a regular triangle. It's not a right angle, since its total is what 180. So we have 100 already. So the C will be 80, right? What is C here? 60, right? 60 because the total must have to be 180 so it will be 60 here as well and this looks like an equilateral triangle because all the angles will be equal all the sides should be equal okay another important thing this is exactly the same triangle we have just saw right but we have just seen so now uh, important thing is uh, you know that capital C is your right angle, right? 90 degrees. And whatever the side you have, meaning the opposite side of the capital, I'm saying the C, which is 90 degree, the opposite side of the C, which is a small C side, that is called hypotenuse. Okay? These names are extremely important. That is called hypotenuse. Okay? And one of the angles, either A, or B, not C, okay, the other ones, meaning they accept the right angle, either A or B, we call those, you know, we just give it, a, give give those, uh, one of those angles a name called theta, theta is a symbol like this one, you see the theta symbol, this is a symbol, it's a Greek symbol, okay, but we, we call it a theta, and then whatever the theta, we just assume that is your angle, okay, and then anytime we say 
At Jason side, we will say that the, the adjacent side means this one, which is basically incident to this angle, okay? Meaning, now we have three angles, right? A, B, and C, and C is 90 degree, and A is theta. Now, if the capital A is theta, the small a is going to be your opposite side. Anytime I just use this triangle, I would say opposite side, that means you will know the opposite side means a small a. Okay, because theta is here, because because opposite side is defined in terms of theta. If there is a theta, that means opposite side means is the opposite side of the angle theta. Now the angle theta is here, uh, yeah, basically is a, right? Angle a. Okay. If the theta theta can be also angle b. If you have it in the angle b, then the opposite side will be going to be small b, right? But but for this case, small b is your adjacent side. Let me let's let's see some, some some more. Then we'll get back to this and we'll, we'll look at some quick questions to understand this again. Now, for any right triangle, for any right triangle, remember this is only true about the right triangle. For any right triangle, there is a theorem called Pythagorean theorem. Now, this theorem tells you that what exactly uh, will be how you will be calculating the C, meaning how what will be the length of C, meaning the hypotenuse, given that you know the other two sides, meaning the small a and a small b. Now, this is exactly the formula, okay? Now, using this formula, if you know the small a and a small b, remember, the small means these are the sides, right? These are not the angles, these are sides. Meaning, if you know the side length, like one inch or two inch or one centimeter, five centimeter, whatever it is, if you know the side a, and if you know the side b, you should be able to find the C, the length of C. And this is the formula. C is square root A square plus B square. Similarly, if you know C and B, you should be able to find A. If you know C and A, you should be able to find B. Pretty much it's like you have three sides. If you know two, you should be able to find the other one using the Pythagorean theorem. This is the same theorem, but we have just used the different uh, way of just finding the, I'm saying, we just twisted the same formula just to find the other, you know, either one. I'm saying C or A or B, okay? Based on given that you know other two, okay? And this will be always true. This will be always true as long as you have a right triangle. It's not true for any other triangle or except the right triangle. It has to be right triangle. And remember, it has to be right triangle and a small c must be your hypotenuse, meaning small t will be your opposite side of the right angle, meaning opposite side of 90 degrees. Okay. Let's see. So this is a, you know, this is a, this is a very important example which basically helps you to see how we can use this Pythagorean theorem to solve some real life problems here. For an example, let's say somebody is trying to cross a river, okay? So let's say, uh, you are trying to cross a river, let's say you are the one, and then the force motor and the river current, there are two different forces, right? Because you probably want to go like this, but you will be going like this because of the river current, right? So let's say this is the one, one side of the river and this is the other side of the river, and you are trying to cross the river, okay? But you probably started here and trying to cross like this, but due to the current, you'll be doing, going like this. Okay, so that means what? You will start from here and you will end up here. Now, the point is you are actually crossing this distance. But you might not be, you, you, you see, even if you are trying to cross this distance, you probably end up crossing this whole length, which is about like 500 meter. Okay? And then the point you started, you are basically went all the way to 300, 300 meter width to reach to the other other side, okay? But the question is, what what exactly is the width of the river? This is the width of the river, okay? But you started here, you went there, and you basically traveled 500 meters, but that's not the width of the river, since you basically uh, had a diagonal instead of just going the vertical di direction, okay? Because you cannot go vertical direction because of the river current, okay? Now, this kind of problem can be easily solved by the Pythagorean theorem because, because you can draw a right triangle here. 
And once you draw the right triangle, look at this. This is your hypotenuse, right? Meaning the small c, because this is your capital C, right? This angle is your capital C, so this side is your small c, meaning the lowercase c. So what you can do is you can just apply the formula. Now let's see which formula we need to use. We have three options. Check which formula we need to use. You know the hypotenuse, right? So your right answer will be B. It's just using the formula which has been in the last page. So you are pretty much using the formula from here. So look at this. You are looking for A here, right? I'm saying if you just compare it to the next problem. You are looking for A. And the formula for the A is what? A equals to a square root C square minus B square. So here, your C is basically 500 meter. And the B is 300 meter. And that all you are doing is you are just applying the formula, and the right answer is B. No, no, I'm, I'm saying if you just apply this formula and solve it, you'll get the, the distance. I'm saying the width of the river is 400 meters, which is pretty easy to find using the Pythagorean. Now, if you solve this, the right answer will be C. So that's your answer. Okay. That's the same problem. Now, let's see whether we understand some other problem. This is from the electrical engineering people. I'm saying this is especially for the electrical engineering people because they have a formula like this. Z square equals star square plus X square, where Z is called impedance of a circuit, R is resistance, and X is a reactance. Now, they have a similar relation like the Pythagorean theorem. Now, if the R is given to you and X is given to you, you should be able to find the impedance, which is Z, using the same formula like this one. That's exactly the similar to this one because you can draw a Pythagorean triangle like this, I'm saying, which is again a right angle. So if you look at this one, the Z is your hypotenuse. And you are looking for hypotenuse. So the formula will be A, right? Hypotenuse equals to the square root of 60 ohm square plus 100 fine ohm square. That's exactly the formula. Remember the formula was what? C equals to square root A square plus B square, right? C equals to square root A square plus B square. We are just using the same formula like that one. So here A and B is your X and R, right? C is your Z. Now, um, if you apply the formula, I think the right answer is C. 121 ohm. We apply it in the calculator and see. I think the right answer is 121 ohm. So this is again another example of uh, Pythagorean theorem. So using the formula like these, so you are trying to find the apparent power from the active power and reactive power which are given to you. So basically something like this. You are you have the apparent power S given, Q given. So you are looking for P. Again, it's a, it's, a, it's a right triangle, and then the formula of the for the p would be b, right? So square root of square of hypotenuse minus the square of other side q, right? You take the square root of that, and the answer will be 40 here. So the answer will be 40 watt. Right answer is c. These are some example, specific example from the electrical engineering, but it doesn't have to be electrical, I'm saying. Anywhere, if you have a right triangle, you will, you will be able to apply the Pythagorean theorem, okay? Okay, again, reminder, this is the hypotenuse, okay, which is the opposite side of the right angle. This is the right angle. Remember, again, this triangle, all the uppercase letters are the angle, okay? All the lowercase letters are the side. And the lowercase letters are the opposite of the of the angle. So if this is your angle C, then this is the opposite side of the angle, which is a small c. If this is the angle A, the opposite side is this, which will be angle A. I'm saying the side A, small a. If the angle is B, uppercase B, the opposite side will be small b. Okay? So pretty much uh, small letters are the opposite side of the angle you are given, where the angles are all the uppercase, okay? So angles are all the uppercase ones. Now, look at this.
at this, these two images, differences. See, I move the A, and that is quite possible because the only thing that I cannot move is the C. I'm saying because the C will be always like 90 degree angle. Okay, but sometimes we draw it like this. So whatever I do, I'm saying I'm just thinking this is A, but I can just draw it like this where this is A. But look at this. If I move A, then small A will be this one. Because a small a means it's always the opposite side to the angle a, okay? Because anytime I move a and b, based on that, the side a and b will be swapped as well. So be careful. It doesn't matter how we draw it. Just only be careful about what is the opposite side and which angle we are talking about, okay? And another thing is, if a small b is your opposite side of angle b, then a small a will be called adjacent side to this angle. Okay, this is the adjacent side to this angle. So be careful about the opposite side and adjacent side, okay? Now these are some examples because we can rotate the, the triangle, a right triangle in many different ways, but no matter how you rotate it, you should be careful about the A, B, and C, how you just use the A, B, and C. But remember, the C will be always 90 degrees, which is a little bit safer, but A and B will be the ones which will be swapped and rotated on something, okay? Now, in a right triangle, the opposite, the side opposite the 90 degree angle is called what? Hypotenuse, right? So the right answer is B. The opposite side of the angle 90, Right? Right angle. Okay, A is what? Small a. Okay, this is the small a, right? This is not adjacent to angle A because adjacent to angle A should be this side. Okay, is this opposite to angle A? Yes, because this is the opposite of angle A. This is your angle A. This is the opposite side. This is not hypotenuse for sure because the hypotenuse is C. And 90 degrees is just this angle, right? So the right answer here is B. Let's check another one. What is a small a again? A small a is adjacent to angle B. Right or wrong? That is right, because this is your angle B, so this is the adjacent side to the angle B. But remember, this is also the adjacent side to this one, right? Whereas, this is the opposite side of angle A, this is the opposite side of angle B. So the right answer is A. How about this one? Small b is adjacent to angle b, not true, opposite to angle b, which is true, right? So the right answer is b. Small b is adjacent to angle a, which is true. You see, this side is an is an adjacent side to angle A, right? Right answer is A. Small c is the hypotenuse, right? Because that will be always opposite to the angle C, and angle C is always 90 degree. In case in, 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 in right triangle, again, angle C is 90 degree. Right, right answer is D, which is hypotenuse small c, right? Be careful, lowercase. So because the lowercase ones are the size and the uppercase ones are the angles, which is the hypotenuse here. Three, right? See, 
the reason we showed you this because it doesn't you know it, it, it will be always not like a b and c right I'm, I'm saying in the real life it might be something else they have different names so you should be able to identify it so the hypotenuse is three in this in this uh, triangle so right answer is b how about this one which is the 90 degree angle of course uppercase z right right answer is a which side is adjacent to angle x number two because number one is the opposite side of x see this is your x so this is the opposite side and this is the adjacent side but in case of y angle two is your opposite side and one is your adjacent side it's really important to identify the adjacent and opposite okay because whenever you talk about different angles you get to meaning whenever you are talking about the angle x whenever you talk about the angle x then one is your opposite side and two is your adjacent side but whenever you are talking about angle y then two is your opposite side and one is your adjacent side okay so be careful about that so that which is the adjacent side to angle x so the right answer is two which is b which is the opposite to angle x this is your angle x this is your opposite right which is number one so the right answer is a now here we have all the trigonometric functions now <coughs> these are the very basic and main trigonometric functions but there are some other functions as well but the question is what are these you see these, are, these have some names I think some of you have been exposed to these so this is called sine cosine and trying tangent but and with all these functions there is an angle right so for an example this is sine 30 sine 45 sine 60 cos 30 45 60 similar is 10 and they have some constant values so anytime you see 10 30 degree you know that that means 0.577 okay and if you use your calculator it should be able to give you just if you press 10 3 0 it will always tell you the constant okay but how do we get this you know value i'm saying how do i know what it is why is 0.577 so we'll, we'll see it soon we'll see it how we get this okay but before we start before we look at that some of the functions are called inverse trigonometric functions the only difference between the trigonometric functions and inverse trigonometric functions because in the trigonometric functions you have seen that with the with the functions we we give angle and we get a constant right let's say we said sine 30 is what 0.5 okay or whatever so so we so we said this sine 30 is 0.5 right so this is you 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 give the angle to the function you get a constant but in the inverse trigonometric functions is it does the reverse you give the constant and it gives you the angle and that's why it's an inverse function so pretty much all of these are same so if you give the constant it, it returns an angle okay now remember you can do all of these in the calculator just using this but make sure your calculator is in degree mode because remember last class we talked about the angle that angle has another measure which is called radian so your calculator might be in radian mode or your calculator might be in angle um, degree mode so make sure it's in degree mode so that you can do it very easily okay you should be able to change it just pressing the mood or i'm saying you know it dep depends on the calculator but most of the calculator should have a, have something called mood and you should be able to change it from there now can you find sine 30 using your calculator no matter which calculator you use but make sure you use a scientific calculator if you don't have anything you can use the calculator you have in the computer which has also a scientific version and then you can just use it see whether which you can you, you can find the sine 30. just check the calculator you have in the computer okay 
uh, it should be under the accessories. So here is the calculator from this computer. So make sure you calculate change the mode view. If you go to view, change it to scientific mode. So then you will see something like this. So the, here you have the sine function. So you see we can change it to degree, radian, gradients. So make sure you have it in the degree mode and then press sign and then press 30 then see you should be able to oops I think it's, it's the reverse part so it's 30 sign see some calculator you have to enter the degree first and then press the sign okay for an example this one I, I press 30 first and then I click 30 assign then I got 0.5 so pretty much all the all the um, angles even if it is not 30 because you have seen 30 60 45 but it can be something else like 55 if I press 55 and sign now this is the value for sign 55 which is a pretty long but you know sometimes we use just only first two decimal place or like three it depends on the problem okay? so that's how you can use any calculator and find the value for uh, all the trigonometric functions so you don't have to memorize anything can you find sign 25 What is sine 25? Okay, let's see, again use the calculator 25 sine 0.422. So the right answer will be D, right? Which is the rounding of the three uh, the three decimal place. Cos 25. So 25 cosine 0 0.906. So right answer is A. Cosine 70. So we just press 70 cosine 0 0.342, right? Right answer is B. Tangent 70. 70 tangent 2.74. Right, meaning the seven five if you round it, so right answer is C. <coughs> tangent fifty, fifteen. Okay, so fifteen tangent so this is point two six seven. So if you round it, it will be A point two six eight. Now we look at a couple of inverse functions. Okay, now remember in inverse function, you will be uh, a constant to the function, but the function is written angle. Okay, return an angle. So your answer is going to be an angle. Okay. Let's see what you get here. It's a sine inverse. So it's point six four three. Oops. Uh, if you do the that's not this one. I think inverse, you have to press inverse here, right? 0.643. I think this calculator, because you know, I, I, <laughs> I, I don't use this calculator much, but if you press the inverse, you see all the inverse functions here, right? Now then you click inverse, you get the degree. I mean, I'm saying as long as it's in inverse mode, you see all the inverse functions, okay? Now this is what, 40.015, which is pretty close to 40, so the right answer is B. Okay. But the thing is, the reason we give you this question is because everybody has, you know, most of the people has different calculators, unless you go to a math class at Southwest, because most of the people have TI calculator, right? TI series, TI 83, 83 plus, 84, or 84 plus. Those are pretty li pretty much similar functions you do, but other calculators have different functions like this one. So make sure you know how to use your calculator to get this. So you know everybody probably will have different ways of doing it, but I just want to make sure we, we know how to do that. So sine inverse 0 0.985. If I do sine inverse 0 0.985, it's already in inverse, so it's 80 degree pretty much. So right answer is C. Okay. 
is, is again uh, cos cosine inverse okay, cosine inverse points so there's point seven six six I go to the inverse function I press cosine inverse 40 degree again so the right answer is a let's see cosine inverse 0.819 let's go here 0.819 inverse cosine 35.315 so 35 degree so right answer is b tangent inverse try this 0.176 inverse tangent it's only 9 degree 9.98 close to 10 degrees so it's right answer is d so that's tangent inverse again 3.08 tangent inverse 3.08 and then tangent inverse you get 72 degree so right answer is c now let's look at some more uh, more about some functions now remember if you have <coughs> all these all these things like whatever you have seen so far Pythagorean theorem and the trigonometric function the only problem with all of these is these work only on right triangle so the point is what happens if you have some other triangles like equilateral you know there are plenty of other triangles right so because all these things work only on right triangles so what we do is sometimes we just you know we just convert the other triangles into right triangle somehow just to apply the trigonometric functions for an example here look at this one at the top one this is the yellow you know see the yellow if you see the yellow lines those are the original triangle so originally this is a acute triangle right where you have oh no this is a uh, obtuse triangle because this angle is more than 90 but none of the other angles are 90 so what we did is we have drawn a line like this and we divided this into two right triangles now once you do that you should be able to apply the all the trigonometric functions and Pythagorean theorem in this side and this side independently because you have two right triangles but still you have some way of measuring the length of the sides because you can use up all those fun functions now here if you see this one the yellow one this is again a obtuse triangle because this is more than 90 degree but you cannot apply any trigonometric functions here so what we did is we have drawn the line like this and we made the whole thing as a right triangle see a lot of times times you do this we somehow apply something or do something to make the other triangles to right triangles so that we can apply the trigonometric functions Pythagorean theorem and then we can get some measure of different side or angles you see so that's that's what we are showing you here now here you go remember we are talking about all the sign at the beginning sine 30 sine 40 and all those values you got in the calculator and those are constant but the point is how we get this this is exactly how we get this now for an example we know that whatever our theta now from now on we talk about the theta so if it is if this is the theta so this is going to be your adjacent side to theta right and this is going to be the opposite side of theta now remember the theta is a Greek symbol and this is used to just represent an angle which is not the right triangle but the other angle because you have another two angles there right so if you have if you this is your theta so this is your adjacent side and this is your opposite side now if you are trying to measure the sine theta now whatever the theta is theta may be 30 degree theta may be 45 theta may be 50 60 whatever if you try to measure it all you do is you are basically taking a, a, a ratio like this you are just trying to get the length of the opposite side divided by the length of the hypotenuse now remember the sine 30 is 0 0.5 right that means no matter how you draw the right angle if the theta is 30 degree the ratio of the length of the opposite side and the hypotenuse will be always 0 0.5 always 0 0.5 that's why sine 30 is always 0 0.5 similarly you know this is the cause which is 
length of adjacent side divided by length of hypotenuse, tangent is length of opposite side divided by length of adjacent side. Okay, so you know from now on we make it a little bit shorter. Instead of writing length of opposite side, we just write opposite. That means it actually is length of opposite side. Or instead of saying length of hypotenuse, we just say hypotenuse. Okay. So in short, this is what we are going to write. Okay. But remember, you theta may be this one as well. I'm saying if this is your theta, because now this is your theta, so this is your adjacent side, and this is your opposite side. Now, if this becomes your theta, because it's possible that we can treat this as a theta, then this side will be the adjacent side, and this side will be your opposite side. So be careful. Your theta may be in different place, okay? Now, this is in short what we get in, I'm saying it's the same thing again, but we just also wrote the uh, inverse functions, because inverse is exactly the same thing, but in inverse format, because in the inverse function take opposite by hypotenuse the ratio as an input and it gives you the angle as an output, okay? Now, this is what in short, we just try to write everything in a different manner, okay? But make sure you should be able to calculate the trig and inverse trig functions on your calculator. I think we have already seen, right? How we calculate it. Now, these are some, um, these are the same formulas, but we have written the formulas in a different manner. Same formulas, but we change here and there. It's the same way, but we'll be using all these set of formulas a lot. And also, when you'll be answering the quiz questions in pause during the test, now after this chapter we are done, then you will see all those formulas will be given to you. So you don't have to memorize any of these. But the point is, you will have to know which one to use when. Because for every single question, we'll be giving you all the formulas. That's exactly how the real life is. You, all the formulas are open to you, but you need to know which one is to use when, okay? So you don't have to memorize it, but make sure you understand what, how we use it. Again, these are trigon trigonometric and inverse trigonometric functions in one place. Now let's look at a couple of quiz questions here. If you are given A, look at this. Remember, again, if it is lower case, that's a side, right? If it's an upper case, that's an angle. That's pretty generic in, I'm saying, in trig discussions because we just use it so frequently and so comfortably. It's pretty much most of the people use the same formatting. Now, okay, you are given a small a. You are given capital A, meaning the uppercase A, for the right triangle below. Which substitutions are true? Now remember, whatever the angle you are given, okay? Because you might be given only one angle. Uh, see, I'm not talking about the right angle. Because you will know the right angle just looking at the triangle. So nobody will say, oh, this is your 90 degree, because you know that. You can see, right? So they will either give you A, meaning the angle A, or angle B. Now, whatever is given, no matter is A or B, we treat that angle as theta. Now that means this, if you are given angle A, that means your angle A is going to be your theta. But if you are given angle B instead, then angle B is going to be your theta. Remember, based on the th theta, your adjacent side and opposite side will be different, right? So for an example, in, in, in this problem, let's say we are given angle A. So that means what? Angle A is going to be your theta which is right. Now, so now this is your theta, let's say. Now, if this is your theta, which one is the opposite side? This is your opposite side, right? So that means small a equals to opposite, which is right. But b is not hypotenuse, because the hypotenuse is pretty much a small c always, okay? So, but small b is going to be your adjacent side because this is your theta. Be careful because based on theta, adjacent side and opposite side just, I'm saying, keep flipping, right? So be careful which one is theta, okay? So right answer here is actually D because A is theta that is given. Since A is theta, I'm saying the angle A is theta, so a small a, lowercase a must be your opposite side because opposite side and adjacent side will be always based on theta, okay? 
So if this is your theta, so this is the opposite side which is a small a, and small b is going to be your again adjacent side. Any question here? See, this is the most important. Uh, we will look at a lot of lot of like this, but make sure we understand what it is. Okay. Now let's say we are given all these functions. If you are given a small a and a small c. Remember, small a, c means these are all the sides. For the right triangle value, well, which formula would you use to find the angle a? <coughs> Remember, whatever you need to find, that should be in your formula in one side isolated. Right? Because you are looking for it. So we are looking for angle a, right? So first of all, you must, you probably want to use either the formula you have in B or C, right? Because in both of these formulas, angle A is isolated, which is okay, okay? But in the right side, in, in the formula B, you are, you have A and C. In formula C, you have A and B. So which one do you want to use? You are given a small a and a small c in the problem. Okay, you must use the B, the formula you are given in the B because that's how you'll be able to use A and C because that's what you know. You don't know what is B, what B is because that is not even given in the question. I'm saying whatever you are given in the question, based on that, you will be selecting your formula. The trick, you have plenty of formulas. The only thing that you need to know which formula to use and, and the, you know, the way you decide it, which is basically the best formula based on what is given. Now at this point you are given A and C. So you see the right side you have A and C in formula B. I'm saying whatever you are given in the formula B. In the left side you have angle A isolated because you just want to find the angle A. So the best formula for this would be B. But, not, but remember what happens if I use the other formulas? I could have find the same thing as well but I might need more steps. So the best formula would be B. I'm saying whatever you have read, you are reading the book. Okay? You are given the book. Okay. So let's say you are given a small a and a small b, and you are looking for angle a. Which one to use? This time, this should be, of course, C. Because you are looking for angle A, which is isolated. In the right side, you are using A and B, right? Small a and a small b, which are given in the question. Okay, let's see another example. Let's say you are given a small a and angle A. And you are looking for a small b. See, we have also written how we get this formula. So this formula is, we got it from number eight. So number eight is exactly this one. Look at this. Number eight, we said adjacent equals to opposite by tangent, okay? Now in this case, your adjacent is B. Why is B? Because this is your theta, right? So adjacent is B. And opposite is A, right? That's what we have here, opposite is A. And then since this is tangent theta. Now the theta is your angle A. We wrote it A. So be careful. You, see, you notice what we have written here is based on all the formulas you have in the top. So I think the best formula will be A here because you are looking for a small b. In the right side, you are using a small a and angle A, which are given in the question. So that will be your best choice. See, you have in total you have 12 formulas based on. Twelve formulas is the same formula, but we have written in different ways. That's how we have all these twelve formulas. And pretty much in all questions, in pause, in quizzes, test, you'll be given all these twelve formulas. All you need to do is you have to choose which one is the best. Sometimes you might find multiple ones, but most of the cases you probably will end up with one which is the best. But you have you, you, people have can use the other formulas, but they will have more steps. That's still the same thing. Okay? Okay.
you are given small b and angle b okay this substitution since the angle b is given angle b is your theta right now so this is your theta okay so small a is your adjacent side right now right and small b is your opposite side so right answer is b okay be careful anytime given the i'm saying whatever you are given in the question based on you must be able to identify what is the opposite side which one is adjacent side okay how about this one Let me give you a couple of seconds here so that you can think. Okay, which one is the right choice? Small b and angle b you'll be using and you want to find a small a. So the right choice is a. How about this one? You have you know a small a and a small b, a small c, but you are looking for a small b. Just use the Pythagorean, right? Don't forget the Pythagorean. That was even before the, we talked about before the trigonometric functions. That's but that's still an important one. Okay. So this time you can use only because you are given some sides and you are looking for another side. So you don't even need to know any of the angles here, right? So just use the Pythagorean. So the right choice would be D, the last one. Let's look at another example here. So you have. How about this one? If you know the angle A, you know the angle A and side A. You have you are looking for all these three, but just let's do one at a time. Now let's say you are looking for A, you are looking for B. Now remember this A and B always sums up to 90 right since the a is 35 b is going to be 55 right that is your formula number 30 so you know it very well that that's 55 now this is what you know you know b you know a you know a small a i'm saying the side now you are looking for b or c now let's say to find c Again, C is hypotenuse, which probably will be your best choice, given this information. You can either use, you can use rule number two. Let's see what do you have in the two. C is opposite divided by sine theta. Now, whenever you do C, this is your C. Now, the question is, which one is theta and which one is opposite? But the, th the, the thing, here is important deal for you. You know A, you know B as well. Now, if you use A as your theta, your opposite will be small a. Okay? But if you use B as your theta, your opposite will be small b. But here you don't know small b right but you know small a so the best choice would be this is your theta which you know which is 35 right also use this as your opposite because you need opposite and theta right so 2 is an option can you use 5 let's check 5 Hypotenuse is what? Adjacent over cos theta. Now, look at this. If you use this as an angle, B is your adjacent, but you don't know B. But you can use this as an angle, theta. Then this is your adjacent, right? Which you know. So B is what? 55. But adjacent you know, which is 6 feet. So just use 2 and 5 both I'm saying either one so both are good choice the reason both are good choice but be careful because 
depends on which one you are considering as theta and which one is you are considering as your opposite, right? That exactly how we use it. So make sure you understand which one is angle and side. So that's that's quite important here. Now we are so how much you got? About so this is about the C a over sine theta so whatever a so let's say this is this is our uh, this is our theta which is sine 35 now let's do this here in the calculator let's say our a is a is 6 right divided by what is your theta here? If this is your opposite, right? This must be your angle, which is 35. So it's 35 sine, right? So did I do it right? Can you check in another calculator? Yeah, yeah, this is 10.46 here, which is pretty close to C. Do you get the same? Six divided by, because A is at the top. Six divided by sine 35. Yeah. Which is, you know, I'm showing you here is 10.46, which is pretty close to 10.5. So the right answer is your C. And remember, we are using this formula, number two. But remember, you can get the same thing using number five. But this time, let's see. Let me show you how you do that. If you use number five, what you are using? You are using adjacent side and cos theta. But remember, this time, you only know a small a, right? So. If you consider B as a theta, small a is your adjacent side, right? Because so now you have to consider B because you don't know the opposite, right? Now, if this is B, the formula is what? Hypotenuse is adjacent over cos theta. Now, what is adjacent here? Six divided by cosine fifty-five, right? Because the B is fifty-five, right? B cosine, if you press enter, you see we get the same answer again. See, you are using different formulas, but you get the same answer because as I said, you will have multiple choice sometimes. But it's up to you. But no matter which one you choose, you'll get the same answer as long as you use it right. See, exactly even after all the decimal places are even right. All right, so let's see the next part. So now you know all of it. The only thing is you need to know is a small b. Now you probably have a lot of choice because you know have plenty of information. Because you see, the more you know, the mo more choice you will have. Because you know more. Now you can apply many, many formulas. See, one of the things is you know c and a, both of the sides. And you are looking for another side. So you can directly use the Pythagorean. Right? So one of the choice would be applying the formula number 12, which is b equals to square root c square minus a square, because you know the c is 10.5 and a is 6. So you can apply it. You don't need any of the angles. So you can, of course, use number 12, right? How about 3 and 9? So let's see rule number 3. You are looking for opposite side, I think hypotenuse times sine theta. So must be the hypotenuse must be, I'm sorry, the opposite side must be B. So if B is the opposite side, you have to consider theta as capital B, right? I'm sure that you can use this one as well. So pretty much all of the formulas you can use. So you can use 12, 3, 9, 6, all of those. So basically the right answer is B. But 
what I would say is try all of it and see whether you can get the same answer. Just to make sure you understand which one is the opposite side, which one is the adjacent side, and how you are considering all of it. Okay? But remember, no matter which one you use, as long as you use the right, I'm saying. So let's say we use number eight here. We got that. But you know, as I said, you can use multiple one to get the same answer. Okay? Since you know a lot of information. Okay, that was almost it. Now we are pretty much done with the syllabus for this class at the very end. Make sure you notice the date of the final. It's just one week from right now, next Friday. But the time is a little different because this is announced by the college. It's not, I'm saying, announced by me. So it's pretty, it's little different and we'll have it for two hours, 7.30 to 9.30, okay? And also there is a sample final in pause. Once you are done with this, I'm saying the quizzes for chapter 15, this chapter, uh, to three, then go to the sample final, make sure you finish the sample final, because the sample final also will be part of your quiz grade. I'm saying, if you do it, you'll get the quiz grade, you can also practice for the final. And remember, the final is a comprehensive test. Pretty much, whatever we have talked about at the, from the very, very beginning, to all the way to the end, will be part of final. But practice the sample final, okay? And, and also, regarding a couple of questions, I know that you don't see the images of the couple of questions. I'm trying to fix it. But also, just to let you know that I'm adding the point, I'll add the point to your total grade so that those get adjusted, okay? If you don't see the grade yet, don't get worried, so we'll, we'll fix it, okay? Another thing is, whenever you'll be doing the sample final, you might notice the same, that you probably do not have the images of some of the questions, okay? Just for now, skip those questions. But those will be at the very beginning. But all the trick questions are fine, I checked it, okay? So trick part is fine, so let's practice the trick because what I'm, my understanding is you pretty much know everything else except trick because we just started trick today, okay? Let's do the trick so you have a good amount of time because you know the last semester I found it was like two days from you know, between the last day and the final, but now we have like a week so you can just practice all the trick questions. Even if today is the last class, you can still send me email about the questions if you don't understand anything in the you know, trick section, just send me an email. I'm saying, make sure you write the question in the email. Don't just say, oh, I have a trouble in question number 15. Now, if you just write that, then what happens is, I have to wait until I get a chance to you know, go in front of a computer, log in, and then I can see your question, which is your question 15, because everybody has a different question in question 15. Because all the questions in the quiz and pause and on the test and the sample test are randomized. So the question 15 is not same for everyone. Make sure you write the question, then I can answer it from my cell phone right away, okay? Or at least I can give you some hints. Let's try this formula or do this, okay? Make sure you practice all the questions and just send me an email in case you have any questions since this is the last class, okay? And let me know I'm saying. Let's practice the question and see whether you have any questions.